that was fun, but it looks like in 30 days I'm going to be out of the YouTube Partner Program. Are you a creator with a small YouTube channel trying to get to 4,000 hours? I want to tell you what worked for me. Before I get into that, I want to point out that over here is a message for my regular subscribers. Subscribers for me was no problem. The subscribers shot way up to 1,000, and once we got 1,000, everyone's like, yay, you did it. I'm like, no, I haven't done it. It's that 4,000 watch hours that's going to be the problem. And now over here in English is the same message for my regular subscribers. All these advice guys say, find a very narrow niche. And I'm like, I found one so narrow that even the advice guys are saying, oh boy, that's pretty narrow. You may be surprised to hear that Esperanto is a very small niche. What's Esperanto? Some information over here about that. So my channel is called Esperanto Variety Show. And today, as I'm filming it, I received the email from YouTube saying I was just accepted into the YouTube Partner Program. This is something I've been working on for more than a year at this point, and I've watched a lot of people, a lot of advice on YouTube, and a lot of times I feel like they're not talking to me. A lot of times I feel like maybe they don't understand what my niche is, or maybe since they're working with quote unquote small channels with 50,000 subscribers, they don't really can't really relate to what I'm doing here. Of course, the number one thing that you need to work on is making sure you have great content, and all these other guys will tell you that. And so in the past year, I've learned a lot and still have a lot to learn about making great content. I want to show you guys some specific data from my channel, and you'll see sort of how that story takes place. I've been doing YouTube for, I think, eight years. Most of that time, I was just horsing around on a channel called Mr. Two String. That was just for fun. And then in 2016, I started my channel Esperanto Variety Show, where I started making regular weekly videos. Esperanto is a fine niche, a very specific niche. And there aren't a lot of people making regular content in Esperanto or about Esperanto. So I felt like I was in a good position. But what happened is I hit July. Um, I went away to the Esperanto summer school. I did some things with my family. Fell off the wagons. And for most, roughly six months, I did not make regular content. Then on January 21st of last year, I got the famous email from YouTube saying they're going to cut it off if you don't have a thousand subscribers and... 4,000 watch hours in the last 12 months. 1,000 subscribers, I didn't think that would really be a problem, but I knew I wasn't going to get to 4,000 watch hours. At that time, I think I had 1,300 watch hours in the previous 12 months, and there was just no way I was going to get three years of watch time in the next 30 days. So I put a note out on my, my personal Facebook uh, timeline, and I said, well, friends, it was fun, but it looks like in 30 days I'm going to be out of the YouTube Partner Program. Somebody said back to me, hey, well, you know, Esperantists love a lost cause. Those weren't his exact words. So maybe you could just put a call out. Hey, everybody, I need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Can you help? And I thought, that's not going to, that's just, that's just nutty. I said, even if every day, even if I did a daily campaign of videos trying to raise attention, trying to raise watch time, there's just no way I can make up that that lost time. Uh, I said, the only good thing that will come out of it is I'll have that sort of increased awareness around my channel because of the campaign. And the answer that came back from my friends was, why not? And I thought, hmm, why not? So from, from, th from that moment till February 13th of last year, I did daily videos. And you'll see on the statistics, there's a big spike for those 30 days in a combination of people coming and uh, just finding out about the channel for the first time, and also uh, just the fact that there were more new videos. There was a constant flow of new videos. But of course, even that wasn't enough. Subscribers for me was no problem. The subscribers shot way up to 1,000, and once we got 1,000, everyone's like, yay, you did it. I'm like, no, I haven't done it. It's that 4,000 watch hours that's going to be the problem. When I got that email from YouTube, I was at 1,100 hours. From the end of that campaign, going back 12 months, which is how they measure it, I had gone up to 1,678 hours, so that's you know a 500-hour boost. Not bad, but certainly not 4,000 watch hours. All the experts agree you need to have good content and good engaging content if you want people to watch and keep watching your, your stuff. So over the next year, I did everything I could to learn about making better content and uh, engaging content. I, I watched to see what people were watching, not watching. I watched at which part of the video that people were saying, all right, I don't need to see this anymore. I followed all the advice that I got from the big advice channels, but it still wasn't enough to really boost 
my watch time to 4,000. So for example, in 2018, January to December, the total watch time for my channel was 3,300 hours, 3,380 hours. That's a long way forward, but still wasn't enough to get to 4,000. Then as I got closer to the end of 2018, I started, I started thinking, that, that big boost that I got last February, last January, last February, that's going to scroll off the end before I can get to the 4,000 watch hours. Now what am I going to do? So towards the end of 2018, I thought, that, that goal is still out of reach for me. I'm doing what I can to do great content. My watch time was significantly higher in 2018 compared to 2017 but it still wasn't enough. And around the same time, my wife said, I think you need to get a job. And I thought, she's right. I'm going to quit YouTube. This goal of getting 4,000 watch hours, making this sustainable, is not going to happen. So I was ready to quit. But I thought, let me give this one more shot. I got a part-time job, which allowed me some flexibility to keep doing YouTube. By the way, for my regular viewers, that's in place till the summer. After that, we're going to come back to the question. So keep watching, right? And I also saw that I had a lot of generous patrons. So thank you to the patrons who are supporting this channel and keeping, keeping new videos coming out every Thursday. One thing that I learned in this past year, and I'm very thankful to the viewers for this, is that for a lot of my videos, watch time is a function of video length. If I do a two minute video, people will watch it for two minutes. If I do a 20 minute video, a lot of people will watch it for two minutes, but there's 20% of you that will watch that whole 20 minutes. So, I noticed that if I did shorter videos, my watch time would go down. So I worked on making longer videos and did my best to keep them engaging. So those of you who stuck around and watched those longer videos, thank you. So going into 2019, I was ready to quit that goal. And, but at the same time, I was like, gosh, I've come so close. How am I going to do this? It was actually Jeff from Story Greenlight who made a comment back to me on one of his videos where he said, hey, I saw that your channel is called Esperanto Variety Show. I looked it up, found out, found out what Esperanto is, and oh boy, talk about a narrow niche. And at first I thought, well, yeah, but that's the point. That's, that's, you know, that's what I'm good at. That's what I love to do. That's what people are coming to this channel for. But I kept thinking about that. Oh boy, what a narrow, what a narrow niche, right? Everybody, all these advice guys say, find a very narrow niche. And I'm like, I found one so narrow that even the advice guys are saying, oh boy, that's pretty narrow. So going into 2019, I broadened my scope a little bit. So instead of saying I have new videos in Esperanto and about Esperanto every Thursday, I would say in addition to that, in going into 2019, we have information about language learning in general. I had two thought processes there. One was I can expand the niche a little bit, try to bring in some more awareness to the channel. But the other thing is that people learning Esperanto, they need language advice, right? They need to know generally how to learn a language to learn Esperanto. The same rules apply. So I thought, I'm not really betraying the, the mission of Esperanto Variety Show in doing that, and I was able to expand the channel a little bit. Another thing that I did at the same time was I started doing live streams. I had not done a lot with live streams before because I was concerned about my, my internet bandwidth, quite honestly, but I came up with this idea of streaming my Duolingo practice sessions and inviting people to watch along and either give me advice if it's a language that I'm learning or give them advice if it's a language that I know well. They all have a fairly low view count. Some of them actually have very solid watch time, at least as high as some of my best edited videos. And I have the advantage that I can do an hour long live stream in 90 minutes, two hours, if you, if you count the time that it takes to promote it and the time that it takes to set things up ahead of time and think about what you're gonna say so you're not fumbling for words. So this combination that I did of running the content and doing live streams related to my content made, it, made a noticeable change in my watch time. So on March 10th, 2019, I hit the threshold of 4,000 watch hours. At the time, I had around 2,500 subscribers. And if you look at the, the comparison graph that I put together of the, the, time, from, the time from when I hit those 4,000 hours, going back 12 months, and then the previous 12 months, you can see that even, even compared to that daily campaign that I had done, tweaking my content a little bit and doing a little more live streams, that really boosted the watch time. At the same time, it alienated a few of my subscribers. People left comments saying, I don't understand why you're doing information on Spanish. I noticed that the rate of new subscribers has, has dropped, but I suspect that there are people who come to my channel for that very narrow niche that we talked about. 
So now that I'm at now that I'm at the 4,000 watch hours, my goal is just to sort of maintain that. Now that now I have a problem. How do I go forward with this plan without further alienating my subscribers? To, to take a little of the pressure off there, I'm having a spin-off channel called Salivanto. And that is uh, a name that I use around the internet. It's also how I'm known on Duolingo, so hopefully people that are coming for my Duolingo-specific content will be able to find and understand what that's all about. But if not, it's, that's just sort of a secondary project. The main project is going to continue to be Esperanto Variety Show. So to the small creators watching, I hope you found this information useful. To my regular subscribers, I want to tell you a little bit about what's coming up in the coming weeks. We are going to be moving back to more content in Esperanto and about Esperanto and fewer language tips. We're going to keep doing the live stream for Esperanto because that one's very successful on this channel and it ties in very nicely to what we're doing. And there's also the Salivanto channel that's going to be rolling out. If you like the live streams, if you like learning Spanish, if you like Duolingo tips, if you have information to bring about those things, that's the place for you. I hope you guys can find room for both, uh, but if you like one or the other, that's wonderful. As I've hinted, one thing that's really important to me is making this effort sustainable. It takes a lot of time and effort to make videos and to have regular content, keep things interesting, right? It doesn't happen in just a weekend. It takes a lot of time. Over the time that I've been doing Esperanto Variety Show, I've seen a lot of people start doing content in Esperanto and then stop doing content in Esperanto. And there only have been a few channels that consistently do content in Esperanto. So if you'd like to see more, Stay with me and we'll figure out how we can make this sustainable. Getting into the YouTube Partner Program again is just a very small part of that. You don't make tons and tons of money on YouTube ads, so I will still have the Patreon page. Several recent new patrons have told me, hey, I didn't know you had a Patreon page. So I thought I was mentioning it too much. Apparently I wasn't mentioning it enough. But anyway, so I do have information about Patreon. And yeah, once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next video.